Okay, Kim, would you like to open a prayer, please? Lord, give us your guidance as we uh, as we as we read your word. Um, learn what we can, what is being instructed to us in the book of Job. Mm -hmm. We uh, pray for all of our activities over the next few weeks as we're going about our family and neighborly responsibilities. Amen. 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 Okay. So just for, for your benefit, uh, Owen, um, uh, one of the, the few, the, the first verses or just the introduction Bob has, has written in his notes um, is that Job did not bring, bring any of these pop problems on himself because of some disobedience or character flaw, but he did benefit from abiding in his many and difficult trials. And comparing it to John 15, where the branches were cut off or pruned, uh, Job was not cut off here. This is Job being pruned. Um, so that, that's kind of what we we were we covered last week uh, a bit. Um, I don't... I don't think any of us can explain exactly what God had in mind. Uh, I find Job a very difficult book. It's a hard read. Um, but yeah, God is uh, knows what he's doing, uh, I think was, was important too. Uh, l last week, I, uh, I noted that, that Job was a... a as perfect a man as there was in those days. Um, and uh, the Lord calls Job his, uh, have you seen my my servant Job? Um, he's he's perfect, uh, as perfect as he can be. Uh, he's devout and so on. Um, and the Lord takes him through all this stuff and he has an encounter with God at the end of it. I, 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 I brought to our attention last week that uh, it was a bit like the centurion Cornelius in Acts chapter 10. I didn't have it at my fingertips at that point, but I looked it up since, uh, where uh, Cornelius was a God believer, as Job was. <coughs> Excuse me. And he was generous, and uh, he helped the people with building the synagogue and so on. Um, but there was more to come. Um, Cornelius, although he was a God believer, I would contend that he wasn't saved at that point. Um, and a bit, a bit like Job, Job was as perfect as he could be, that hadn't yet had an encounter with God himself. He believed God was there, and so did Cornelius. Um, and it was only when uh, Peter came, uh, because of a, a vision uh, that God had given Cornelius and uh, if nearly simultaneously Peter, that Peter came, preached the gospel to them, and he believed in Jesus and was saved. Uh, so he had an encounter with the living God um, uh, when Peter came uh, under the instruction of God. Um, so in a sense, I, I drew a parallel between those two characters uh, in, in the, the Old and New Testament. Uh, any any comments on that uh, from last week? Do you think that's fair, first of all, that there's a there is a parallel there. How far did you cover in that uh, last week? Was that the whole chapter or what? No, no, no. Just, just the first. I think we were just about getting to where God speaks to Satan and says, you know, you can, 
you've got some free rain here. Uh, we're just about to to go into that now. Um, so okay. Let's let's go to the job. So yeah, the 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 there was more to come for both Job and Cornelius. Uh, Job was being taken into a, a, a different place that he'd never been before, although he was devout and sincere in his belief in God. Uh, we also, in verse 6, uh, the angels presented themselves before the Lord. Um, and we also said, you know, we looked at the, the verse 7, which said, the uh, Lord said to Satan, where have you come from? And Satan answered from roaming throughout the earth and going back and forth on it. Uh, and we surmised that um, he was causing as much trouble as he could as he wandered back and forth uh, over the earth. So I think that uh, we're now about to start verse 8, uh, which I will just read out. Then the Lord said to Satan, Have you considered my servant Job? There is no one on earth like him. He is blameless and upright, a man who fears God and shuns evil. So, there's no one like him. How perfect do you need to be? Completely. Absolutely. Um, more perfect than we can achieve. Um, we can be very sincere. But, yeah. God he said he was perfect. Yep. Yes, I, 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 I think if he was perfect in every sense, Kim, um, God wouldn't have put him through this, is, is my contention. He's as perfect as it can be. Does, does your version say he was perfect? Mine says What's a perfect that? and upright man. Okay. Blameless. My, but mine just blameless. says blameless, uh, none other like him on earth, so that if he there if he's judging him by earth standards rather than him being like you say who's who's perfect <laughs> so that i i didn't i uh i didn't realize perfection was up there mine says bl blameless and upright i i i read god yeah i uh, before i read that verse though uh, uh, linda i did say perfect uh, I didn't hadn't read that until well recently, but it, I think that yeah I'm I'm used to to Job being perfect, or as as I say as perfect as he can be, um, he'll have, he'll have feelings that God was very pleased with with his efforts if you right. like. Um, uh, as, as God was pleased with Cornelius's efforts. Um, I think it says in Acts ten, you know, I've I've, I've heard your prayers and uh, the you know the uh, yes, he, he, in a sense he was responding to Cornelius's prayers. But yeah, there was, there was, there was no one like him on earth, Mickey. Uh, maybe it, it could be said later, and it's he's as perfect as could be under those conditions. And then, but later, with these conditions that came upon him later by the devil, by Satan, uh, it was kind of shown that he had a little bit of self righteousness later on. But uh, but that wouldn't be known until all of those things came upon him. I think that's, that's in some ways that's fair. Um... Uh, he he did everything he knew to the best of his ability to match up to what he thought God wanted. 
that does tend to produce a wee bit of pride, perhaps. Um, if he sees other people not doing that. Well, I mean, later he started um, counting on his own righteousness when he was saying how he wanted a fair, he wanted a judge, he wanted a God to appear and, and that he, there was different things he said later on that showed he had just, just a little bit of, of, I mean, he was much better than any of us or any person we know, but he, he still had, nobody's completely without sin. So he, but he was as good as he could be at that time until this, this happened to him. And then that revealed something in him. Yeah, you're absolutely, I agree entirely, Mickey. I think that's correct. Um, late, much later on or halfway through, I can't quite remember where he said, you know, I, more or less, give me five minutes with God and I'll tell him what's to happen. Um I'll justify myself, if you like, uh, before him. Um, and uh, I think that somebody who is um, as devout as that, uh, perhaps would like to speak to God uh, and and try and justify themselves. From the other side of the cross, if you like, where we are, looking back, there is nothing we can do to justify ourselves. Uh, that requires Jesus to atone for our sins. Um, so he was about to find out that there's more than just in a sense, obeying the rules. What? Uh, uh, this may be a, an obvious question. What, why do you think Satan, uh, the Lord invited Satan along and drew Satan's attention to Job? Well, For then me, now he's, he's even well, better than before that the self-righteousness was shown. Now he knew about the self-righteousness. So the devil drew it out of him. Uh, what were you going to say, Owen? Uh, I, I was just going to say that w that the, the way I look at uh, this is a story of how the Lord works with us in deepening our faith. Um, we're born again, where uh, Job was aware of God the best he could, but uh, lacked that. But nevertheless, the, the Lord had a protection around him. Uh, for a long time and what we uh, begin to see is this um, protection uh, being lowered the fence being lowered and more and more things coming against him uh, why well it forces us to deal with our humanity and uh, and and our relationship with the Lord to strengthen our humanity. Uh, I hope that comment doesn't jump too far ahead, but I, I, I did want to kind of say that uh, in a capsule comment. Uh, it's, it's fine to to go to the end of Job and uh, and see what the answer is, but that that's that's not a problem, Owen. And I think that's absolutely right. Uh, that's why God. It sounds very harsh, I know. When it's, that, that's why God did this was to uh, prove, if you like, uh, Job's faith. Um, 
And so that can come across as a kind of trite answer. Um, but if you just, for all he went through, boy, that's a tough lesson. Yep. Um, and I don't know how I would have coped, even now, this side of the cross, if some of this stuff happened to me, uh, that would uh, that be severe. It, in uh, verse 9, for instance, uh, uh, does Job fear God for nothing? Satan replied, have you not put a hedge around him and his household and and everything he has? Have you blessed the work of his hands so that uh, his flocks and herds and spread throughout the land? You know, so, you know, to me, from the very beginning, I, I uh, Satan is sort of challenging God that you've put a hedge around him and uh, you have protected him. Now, if you're not going to be so protective, let's see how, how much he loves you. So, yeah. Satan's a liar, and um, he's always lying. How do we feel about verse 9? It, it seems like he's following his title of accuser. Mm -hmm. it, even, yeah. even, and ha just as if, well, he's accusing Job of not uh, loving the Lord if he wasn't, if it didn't benefit him. Absolutely right. Um, and, and there is no suggestion of a, pr a quid pro quo on Job's, Job's behalf. Uh, and uh, Job doing stuff for the Lord in order to gain blessing. That doesn't actually feature in verses 1 to 8 at all. There's no hint of it. Job did these things. Job sacrificed and uh, sacrificed for his kids and, uh, and so on, and was devout and so on. But there's no hint that he's doing all that stuff in order for God to, to bless him materially. Um, verse nine jars against my my spirit. Does Job fear God for nothing? My answer to that would be, yes, he does. He's got no ulterior motive, and he does fear God just because he's God. Um, he's he's. I would reckon he's the Job is pure and sincere enough to fear God because he's the Lord. Because yeah. fear of the Lord is wisdom. Yep. Kim? I was just saying, it's, it's, it kind of shows a, a limitation of, uh, of Satan. He can't see the heart, what's in the heart of Job. Lord can, yes. but Satan cannot. He yeah. can just kind of see what's going on physically. That's interesting. Mm. It, it, I, I haven't noticed verse 9 speaking like that until now. Um, but it's tip, <clears throat> excuse me, it's typical of Satan's accusations. Yeah. Um, and uh, we mustn't, mustn't fall for it. You know how the devil in Revelation 12, or Satan, he says, or he accuses the brethren day and night before the Lord. But uh, but let's just see how well he's going to do. He It shows there in Revelation 12, he's going to have to come down to the earth for three and a half years. You know, we're, we're here for 80 years, 100 years, but he's only going to be here three and a half years. However that works out, I don't know what that means exactly in, in Revelation 12. But it says he has to come down to the earth for three and a half years. 
and he'll be here with great wrath. Well, let's just see how well he does, you know, after he's through accu accusing us all that time. Yeah, that, that's that's interesting point, Mickey. It's almost, uh, it's almost gets tiresome, if you like, because Satan constantly accuses the brethren. Um, he, he can't stop himself. Um, whether he knows that he's lying or not, or whether he just likes insinuating or whatever. Um, nothing nothing holds him back from accusing uh, the brethren. It's, it seems in my mind similar to a person that's full of bitterness that's always causing problems for other people because of the bitterness in their heart to continually come and accuse that that's so characteristic of a person who's who's bitter they're always accusing other people looking for their faults why do you think yes. that is linda i think you're right but why do you think that is Because he's bitter? <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> the, uh, I'm just wondering, if, if they're um, like that, um, maybe they're disappointed in themselves. And that their relationship with the Lord isn't like someone who doesn't have another motive. Uh, they cannot imagine not having another motive, uh, a material motive, a reward motive. And that's why they're so bitter. This, this is a deceitfulness of sin. Um, and uh, it, 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 it wraps its tentacles around us. And, and, and we can no longer think straight and we start to believe the rubbish that we've been sold. And I think Linda's right about bitterness. And Satan was the pinnacle of God's angelic, uh, it seems like Satan was the pinnacle of God's angelic creation and that he was responsible for leading the worship for, 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 the, for, for Yahweh, for the Lord. And um, it seems like he got up himself and full of pride and fell for that reason and thought he could become like the most high um and i wonder if one of the things that God lord was doing with job was in a sense um since god's also god loves his creation including satan but he's pointing out to satan that um uh in 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 in, in, uh, in justice, in actual fact, how wrong Satan is. Now, I don't think Satan will heed that that example of Job at all. He'll he'll explain it away with something else. But this is an example of God pointing out to Satan, "Hey God, if say, hey Satan, you've really stuffed up big time." And um, no, I don't think Satan can repent, and I don't think he will will repent. But but. When, when things wrap up, this will be an example to Satan as to how wrong he was and how right God is and how just God is. And, and in a sense, um, God's witness either brings the, the beautiful fragrance of God's presence or the stench of death. And I think for Satan, this incident will be yet another stench of death for Satan. But I don't know. That's my supposition. I, I think that's a, that's a, a good summing up of, of um, the battle uh, between Satan and the Lord, uh, which Satan is going to lose, uh, and he knows it. Um, it's 
written in eternity. Um, it's played out in time. The battle isn't over yet. But God is going to win. God wins. Um, would God have had it a different way? Uh, probably. Um, but this is the way it is at the moment. And yeah, that's our our free will gets in the way. Yep. Yeah. Interestingly, verse 9 leads on to 10 and 11. Um, and it's almost uh, Satan trying to taunt the Lord uh, because when, he, Satan, when Satan says, does God fear Job, uh, sorry, does Job fear God for nothing? Um, and that's, that's, the, that's the statement he's making. And then he works from that statement as if it's true uh, that God doesn't fear, Job does not fear God for nothing. He fears God because he gets massive blessing. Uh, so take that blessing away and you'll stop fearing God. Um, so he's already lost. Uh, immediately he says that. Because Job does fear God because he's the Lord, not because of material blessing. Which I think will be part of the lesson of the, the first of the trials which uh, Job faces. So if we move on to verse 11, Satan then can, continues and challenges God to stretch out his hand and strike everything that Job has. And he will, and, it, and Satan says, Job will surely curse you to your face. That's really nasty stuff. Um, it, 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 you just, it, you cannot imagine uh, under normal circumstances, Job considering that that was an option at all um, because he was such a godly person. And that would be one of the things that Job just would, it would be so unthinkable from Job's point of view that he would curse God to his face for anything. So he challenges God to, to strike him, strike everything he has, sorry. Interestingly, God doesn't do it. As uh, Mickey said, Oh, sorry. Was it was it you Owen, that said that God lowered the the uh, the protection? Yeah, I think it was Owen. Owen. Yeah, that was Owen. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> so God, uh, the Lord said to Satan, "Very well, then he has in you uh, everything he has is in your power, but on the man himself do not lay a finger." And off Satan went. How how does that how does that verse kind of speak to us, how, or does, how does it strike us? Just how do we feel about it? The Lord said to Satan, "Off you go. Do you do your worst, but don't touch him." I think it kind of shows. Uh, um, God certainly will is, is certainly willing to let 
um, uh, Satan work on on him and strip away some of the uh, things that make him, you know, like a man, uh, um, a man's man, uh, success. And yet at the yeah. same time, he's saying, but don't deal with uh, uh, the old with his life yet. You can talk about his, you can take away certain things, but my protection right now is on him. Is that kind of what you were asking, uh, Alan? Or? I was really just throwing it open for comments, so no, no, I'm not, not, not looking for an answer. I don't have the answer. Uh, but yeah, that's that's very fair. <laughs> You're laughing at Ralph. Is 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 Satan in his, in their conversation? Satan was addressing all the things that uh, that God had done for him, and and that if he took those things away, so so that might be why it was limited to to the. He doesn't mention anything about physically harming him. Nope. I was thinking that maybe in uh, there's this pattern in the Bible of the world, the devil, and the flesh. And it looks like it's in those three stages. <laughs> First, he takes away all of his worldly possessions. Then he attacks him in his body. Isn't that the next thing that happened? He, he attacks his body, the devil. Yeah. Later, yeah. And, and then the devil, part of it would be when he comes as a spirit to influence his friends, and his friends start attacking him. That's after that spirit came at night and told one of his friends, uh, I think it was Zohar, he tells him to uh, that Job was to be accused, you know, and and what he was doing. And that he was being attacked because he was had sin. Yeah. So that would be the that would be the devil. I think it could only have been Mickey. And he does it in sort of a barbed way. When you look at the words that are given, that's a, that's kind of jumping ahead. But it is barbed <laughs> words coming from that dream he has that the devil's giving him. Talking about his family, he got crushed, and then he's saying about moths being crushed and, and things like this, and the words he's using. Yeah, the devil knows how to hurt us. I think that um, the Lord. Uh, knows what he's doing. Uh, the Lord takes a risk. The Lord says, well, let's just watch and see what happens to Job when all that you've said uh, takes place. And from our point of view, we don't know how Job's going to respond. We only know because we've read ahead. But if you're putting yourself, at, if we can, next to Job, uh, just observing him as we go through these verses, um, we might think that if the calamity that is about to happen hits him, what human being could stand that sort of horror without questioning God? So whether, whether we curse God or not, I wouldn't like to think that would happen, but just questioning 
you know, why is this happening? A um, lot of people uh, question the existence of a God when they see bad things happening to good people. Yep. Yeah. I, I have a footnote that uh, kind of addresses that. Um, we usually see suffering as almost crippling, uh, a tragedy. But suffering <clears throat> can be a pathway to maturity. God should use uh, Jacob's suffering to bring even greater blessings and strength in the uh, in the end, uh, we can be sure that God is working his good in our lives, even in the midst of our pain. And I, I, I see that, it, uh, as, you know, in people and in Christians, uh, is that when something uh happens uh I, I call it hurdles that we have to go over and I call it that's a character building experience uh for me but and it's so easy to say ah golly what am I doing wrong rather than realizing that God is, is doing something deeper inside of us. Amen. I, I remember that that's something that Dr. Bob would always frequently say, uh, that God's more interested in building our character than making our life easy or, or comfortable. And with that, so if you can keep that in the back of your mind when you do run into these problems, instead of as much as suffering, as painful as suffering can be, to, to try and see what it is that God's trying to do in your life during that. He's, he said that so many times. This burned in my brain. <laughs> Good. <laughs> because it's easy, and that's your first reaction just to when when you're hit, like like you say, when you're hit with trouble. Oh man, why? Why? Why me? What's going on? What did I do wrong? Maybe nothing. How do we tell the difference? You know, our, if he's going to use our, it, whether we did something, if he's using it to build character, knowing the difference really isn't the issue. It's learning what it is he wants you to learn. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And the faster you learn it. <laughs> I'm in my mind, I'm thinking like I want to learn it pretty quick. <laughs> <laughs> Linda, Linda, you ha you have an ulterior motive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't like suffering. <laughs> oh, no, none of us does. Owen, did you want to say something? Uh I I agree with what uh Linda is saying um, um, every we go through life and uh, we so often lose sight of the fact that God is preparing us for an entirely different culture. And that culture is kingdom culture and living his way that glorifies him. 
And um, to me, that's that's the character building that's going on is is not the the character and that I've learned from this world or whatever, but it has to do with God's culture and who we are in him. Yeah. I'm just uh, just trying to think of any of some made up example, if you like, um, of the same thing happening for two different reasons. One is God is saying you've done something wrong, and the other is you haven't done anything wrong, and I'm using this to change you, um, and I. I, I, this is, I don't think this is me, but um, I, I'm used to driving old cars. It, it doesn't bother me how old my car is. If it runs, it runs, and that's that's good. Um, but supposing I were uh, fixed on having a new car and I saved up and all my finances in the right place and uh, I was focused on getting a new car because this old one's <coughs> rubbish. Um, and that became the focus of my of my not my life but the focus of, of my attention if you like um, and the big day arrives and I go out and I step into my brand new car and Think, oh, this is wonderful. I've lived for this moment for, I don't know, five years, something like that. Uh, this is really what I want. Uh, and I drive off and drive around the corner and crash into a police car. Okay. Um, and the other one, the other way of looking at that is almost exactly the same is. I am. I have my old car, and the Lord says, "Probably about time you got a new car." Um, and I look at my finances and I go, "Oh yeah, uh, yeah that's, that's nice. That's good old car, but yeah, it's probably beginning to, you know, fall apart." And um, yeah, I, 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 I can afford to get another car, and I go out and buy one. And exactly the same thing happens. I drive out of the, of the, the forecourt of the car, of the, where I bought the car, turn and drive straight into a police car. Those two scenarios to anybody who doesn't know what's going on are, they, are identical. But there's different things going on in me or from the first to the second. Um, the first I would be, I think I would probably be stricken with regret that I focus so much of my energy trying to get this new car. I eventually got it, and lo and behold, it was taken from me. Um, and what a catastrophe, what a disaster. Um, and the Lord said, well, really, that old car wasn't too bad after all. And um, you really didn't need to buy a new car, but you were really focused on it. And perhaps you shouldn't have been, you maybe should ask me first before you went out and bought a new, spent all that money on a, on a new car. Um, I maybe had plans for that to go somewhere else. Um, and uh, you go, oh, sorry, Lord, I, I, I was really, I won't do that again. I'll, 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 uh, I'll ask you first next time. And uh, if you want me to drive an old car until it stops, um, then I'll do that. Uh, and the second one is the Lord goes out and tells you to time for a new car and he's doing something else uh, in it. And, and you crash into the police car and you go, oh, wow. I didn't see that police car, or 
he came out of a side street or something like that. Um, and uh, it turns out the police car was chasing somebody and they drew out in front of you to get to them and you hit them. Um, and uh, there was no fault. Uh, it just happened. Um, and the Lord said, yeah, I can take care of that. Uh, uh, you know, it doesn't matter. We can, we can get you a different car. Um, and the insurance company pays up and it's all covered. Um, and, you know, the Lord's saying, showing that he can do some uh, work which you, you weren't expecting. Um, and trust uh, is increased in the Lord. And, you know, that, those two scenarios could be identical. One is from a place of, let's say, disobedience or sin, and the other is from a place of obedience. But the two things are identical. So that's what I'm saying. How do we know the difference uh, between um, God allowing something to happen and uh, it happening because we've done something wrong? I think, if we're, I think if we're doing it in disobedience, we possibly become bitter and angry and and estranged from God. If if we're if it's something He's brought upon us, like with Job, I think our response will be more and more of praise and thanksgiving to God that whatever happens, He's there. Um. You read the biographies of, of of Christians who have suffered persecution and all sorts of terrible things. You think, I wonder if I could stand that. And yet, there's a joy, there's a peace to their life, even though even though things are terrible, things are happening to them. Um, and 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 the, and they're finding a, a a peace that passes all understanding. Actually, it's not sort of. Um, you wouldn't expect them to have that sort of anybody to have that sort of response in that situation, and yet there's that um, um, rejoicing, um, peace and joy and contentment, even even though they're suffering horribly at the time, and even maybe being put to death in a horrible ways at the time. And I think that's the difference. I think. Yeah. Yeah. Ken? Uh, I was just just saying you were describing an event which occurred to me this year almost exactly, I and I, I still haven't <laughs> figured out why. I think uh, you mentioned that, actually, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, that was uh, in my mind. <laughs> I, uh, I don't know the reason why. I can't figure it out. Yeah. did some soul searching, but don't know. Yeah. It may have had a benefit to someone who was not involved in this, you know. I... And that's what I was thinking. That could be a third option. Because if you have that wreck for whatever reason, by act of God or your disobedience, it could be that you are in that position to do something that he wants done for. Yep. You'll be in that position for whatever reason, he has you there for a particular reason to do so, to accomplish yeah. something that he wants done. Yeah. I, I think that, that it's, it's uh, what you said there, Kim, is important that, uh, yeah, we can do some soul searching. Um, I, I kind of, you know, sort of shortened the, shortened the soul searching to immediate, but yeah, the, um, we, I think that's important that when things like that happen, my first reaction is, have I done something wrong? Yeah. Um, and if I have done something wrong, let's sort it. Let's get it repented of. Let's get back on track and let's move forward in whatever God has. Um, and that soul searching can be, there is nothing wrong. This is part of God's plan for something else. And right. we may we may never know what that something else is, um, but we have a the thing about it is we have a clear conscience about it. Yes. 
was, my question was to myself was, why did a drunk driver total my car? Uh, maybe it was to keep him from running into uh, someone else. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. We'll and we may know. never. We may never know. Yeah. And and that's and and we we can go and that's fine, Lord, that we may never know. Uh, yeah. There are a lot of things I'm probably glad I don't know. Um, so, uh, the fact that I don't understand this, I accept. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Uh, I I don't think we could handle knowing everything. Yeah. Good. Linda, we're right on the time that we should stop. Yeah, per. Owen, would you close for us, please? And we're not meeting next week. Correct. Uh, and we're meeting the following week at this time. Correct. Okay, two weeks in a row we're going to not be meeting. No. Just, just one. one. Just one. one. On the 22nd. Okay. All right. Of this we'll month, be. we won't be meeting. We'll be back on the 29th. Correct. All right. Okay. Lord Jesus, thank you for inviting us in and thank you for speaking your word to us. Lord, we desire to be uh, driven in all kinds of ways to be closer to you. And uh, we love you and just thank you for the life you've given us to walk in. Just continue to teach us, Lord. Uh, you are the, the vine. And we enjoy your presence yes. in one another. Watch over us and keep us until we gather again. In the name of Jesus, thank you. Amen. 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 Okay. Goodbye, everybody. I'll see you in two weeks.